Hey guys, Preston, welcome to another video. Today we are going to do the review for Justice League. Um, so, I guess let's get started. So, uh, okay, the, I'm going to break it down into different categories, I guess you could say. Try to flesh it out a bit. This is also going to have spoiler talk in it, so if you're not interested in that, I'll tell you when to turn off. Because the first part... It'll be shorter than the spoiler talk, but it'll be the review without spoilers, and then we'll get the spoilers and go a bit more in-depth on the review itself. So, let's start with the the plot itself, like the story part of it. It's, it's good. I mean, like, the movie is fun, basically. It's a fun movie. Sorry about that. It's the TV. It's enjoyable. It's very entertaining, to say the least. It's a... It's nothing mind blowing, nothing ground chattering, but it's entertaining, and it's definitely not like the thirty percent sits on Rotten Tomatoes, which I know doesn't mean it's actually thirty percent. It just means there's more negative reviews. I say it's wrong. It's not that bad. There's plenty, but there's movies on Rotten Tomatoes with the same score that are far worse than Justice League. I just think it does have some drawbacks, some problems that I'll get into later. But one of them is the plot. Actually, I'd say the story feels a bit rushed I guess and it doesn't feel like everything flows together perfectly and that is mainly due to the director switch to the Jet Zack Snyder's family trouble like the death in his family which is tragic but obviously they filled in a new guy and also this is once again leave it to Warner Bros to kind of mess something up so we saw it with Batman v Superman where it turned out that the director's cut ended up being a lot better than the original two and a half hour version which is both long but I feel like as long as the movie's enjoyable, you're good, you're good with a longer movie. Now, it doesn't mean Justice League needed to be three hours, but it could have definitely benefited from being more than two hours on the dot. Like, even Thor Ragnarok came out, huge critic praise, right? 210. So, I mean, it could have benefited from some more time. It feels like not every character got enough screen time, wasn't was flushed out, you know, with the backstory. There's some other scenes that could have built up some character dynamics and relationships that got cut out. Scenes from the trailer, like there would have been more. I believe there has been more Batman and Wonder Woman. Time was just them when they're like recruiting people, because in like the trailer it shows them on like the computer looking at the recruits. Never happened in the movie. Um, that's not a spoiler, because I'm just telling you what didn't happen. So, but yeah, there's a lot of examples like that where you could. There would have been more Batman Wonder Woman relationship building. I guess you'd say more flushed out background for Aquaman and Cyborg and Flash. Some things like that, you know, and it got missed out due to the two-hour runtime, which sucks because it could have, it would have done better for the movie. It would have been made it better off. But two, like I said, still very enjoyable in these two hours. And the character, the cast, and the characters, I'd say, save this movie from being worse off. Sorry about that quick ball. But anyways, um, I guess I'll go into the actors now. I'm not quite sure we ended off. I think kind of said that it's better than the critics say it was. Doesn't mean it was great though. So the acting in this movie, no problems with it. All done really well. They took kind of this rush script and all these changes, and they made the best of it. I mean, Ben Affleck as Batman still did a really good job playing that character. I mean, obviously there's some scenes where he's not as ripped as he was in BVS. Although, to be fair, obviously during the reshoots, he assumed he was done with that movie. And so he's, the weight started to pile on afterwards. He, no no way in any way is he like fat or anything, but he's just not BVS shape as he was, even throughout the whole movie, I guess. But he was, there's was some scenes where you can tell he was more bulky than he was in other scenes. So the reshoots did have an effect. I mean, there's a lot of complaints about Henry Cavill's... He played Superman, by the way. His um, CJ off mustache that looked funny or something. Honestly, me, I didn't really notice it that bad, and it doesn't really take away anything from the movie that's more of a nitpick thing if you're gonna hate a movie because of a bad cgi mustache and you got an issue there is an dependence on cgi in this movie mainly with the the cgi on the villain it's a full cgi villain which i feel like would have been better if there's a bit more practical effects to it i mean in no way are marvel hero villains any good like there's a lot of problems in all superhero movies with like a fleshed out dynamic villain but they utilize real people as villains a lot more often than so far than like it appears to be with the DC EU, and that kind of draws away from the villain feeling more real. 
there's some other problems with the villain, like very cliche, predictable story, but part of the problem also was the cuts, yet again, didn't allow the villain to be as flushed out as he probably could have been. I'm not sure how much it would have changed, but I'm sure it would have changed uh, just a little bit. I mean, you could have gotten a bit more sense to why he was doing it. Um, Superman did good. There's a big tone change in this movie than from the last one with how Superman's been. And I'm sure they were going in that direction anyways, but there's been some speculation that the reshoots and the Josh Whedon coming in and the way Warner Bros. pushed it kind of made him do a complete 180 compared to what he was like in BVS. Like, he was getting lighter, and the, per the purpose was to be a more natural progression of him getting lighter, but this one, he kind of came out super light after a scene we'll talk about later. And Like I said, I'll be able to get more in-depth with my points in spoiler talk, so make sure you stay for that if you've seen it already or you don't care about spoilers. So, yeah, he does still does a great job with acting, and he plays the new play. Tra Lois Wayne is in it for a little bit. Amy Adams is fine. Once again, I mean, all the acting, like I said, was good. Wonder Woman stayed Wonder Woman. It's the same character you kind of know and love from her solo movie and her brief appearance in BVS. I mean, obviously, her solo movie flushed her out more. And obviously, <clears throat> if all these other characters had their own movies first, it could have been flushed out even more. I think one of the things it suffers from is... The runtime cut down the introduction of these characters, but also them not getting the solo movies because they're trying to rush to keep up with Marvel, since, you know, Marvel's already on their third Avengers movie next year, that they kind of skipped the possibility to build these characters up and get more hype for the Justice League movie, and that might be part of the problem why the box office struggles for Justice League have occurred as of right now. Um, but like I said, Gal Gadot, great job. Obviously, um, she does a good job playing Wonder Woman. That's all you gotta say. Nothing's changed with her performance at all. I mean, part of the problem with that is it depends on how you view it. If there wasn't a lot of character growth or dynamic change with her, but you can view it as a good thing because she didn't need it, or maybe it's a bad thing because she wanted a bit of character progression, which part of it was lost in this cut down to a two hour restricted limit when it was probably gonna be more around two and a half, maybe something like that with the way Zack Snyder originally had it planned. But. Um, all the other characters, Ezra Miller, The Flash, did a great job. I mean, even if you watch The Flash TV show and you like that show, you can, res this Flash does a good job and you can respect it. There are different portrayals of the character, obviously, as Flash is used a lot more for comedic relief in this movie than anything else, which I guess it depends on how you want to view it. There's not a lot of seriousness with this character, but and he doesn't get flushed out enough due to cut scenes and things like that, but The Flash does a good job. He, you can tell he's newer at this, and he's, he's got some character traits coming in that are well, and really good performance by Ezra Miller on that. Jason Momoa was Aquaman, also really cool, probably the coolest version of Aquaman <laughs> ever seen. He does a really good job with what he got. And once again, there was going to be more building on his Aquaman character if it wasn't for scenes that were cut out, which is part, the only, it's probably the biggest problem with the movies that they cut scenes out. And it sounds like I'm being negative with this movie, but I promise you it was good. I did like it. And you should see it. I mean, if, so since it was, it's worth it. I think this DCU is worth saving after Wonder Woman's really good. And, like, this movie was good. I liked it. So I feel like if we need some more people to come see this that way, they, Warner Bros. doesn't just, like, abandon ship because of box office. Which I feel like, yeah, I don't know, it's hard. Some things just flop. I'm not sure why this is doing that bad. I don't know if it, it's probably just a lost trust. Which I thought they would have gotten back with, um, Wonder Woman being so good, even the critics liked it, but I guess people saw the Rotten Tomatoes and freaked out right away, so I'm hopefully, maybe word of mouth, and a lot of reviews I've seen from like bigger YouTubers who do reviews have been more positive than negative, which means hopefully the drop off from the second week isn't as bad, and uh, they, hopefully they at least make back their budget, best case scenario, come close with some of the other DCEU movies, and they keep going, because I mean, obviously, sorry, obviously Warner Bros. can afford to take a bust in the box office, but they're not in the business of making bust. So, um, we just gotta hope it works out. Ray Fisher as Cyborg surprised me. I thought Cyborg was gonna be, I thought it was a risk of a character and not enough development would hurt him. I was like, this Cyborg might be the weak link of this movie. He might bring it down. He didn't. I mean, obviously, once again, the cuts, he could have been flushed out even more. But he does a good job, and the actor does a really good job playing the Cyborg. The CGI is not at its best. But there's some scenes where he has a sweatshirt and it looks really cool and it's, I see, you don't have to see the full suit with the CGI. In the CGI version of the cyborg they introduce 
at the end I get so yeah there's like a suit switch towards the end of the movie I'm sorry if, if you were so excited to hear about that it's not that big of a deal and I'm not going to give any context behind it but his suit kind of switch or upgrade at the end of the movie looks a lot better than what he used for the majority of the movie so I'm not sure why I didn't just use the, that version but it's whatever it, didn't, it doesn't affect your movie experience so it's, I don't get that's just a nitpicky thing if you're going to hate that much on the way he looked in my opinion Alfred's in it does fine good mainly known mainly used for quips now and there's still not a lot of building i'm sure the relationship with obviously the relationship with alfred and batman's been established since in this universe batman's been around fighting for like 20 years but you don't see a lot of an alfred batman dynamic i'm not sure if it's due to cuts or maybe even with the cuts it probably it possible it couldn't have been flushed out that much or expanded upon Usually Alfred's kind of more used for one-liners. One scene kind of builds a little something, but nothing crazy. Um, I guess that's all the main characters. I mean, Amber Heard, the Mara character's in it for a little bit. Like, literally one scene. So she's not huge in this movie at all. She'll definitely have a bigger role in Aquaman, which they filmed already. She was in the cast. But she's in it for a little bit, and like I said, it's possible she would have been in there longer if it wasn't for cut. Not sure. She does a good job. She looks like she'll do good in the Aquaman movie. Um, J.K. Simmons as Gordon was cool, fit the role. He wasn't like a big part. He wasn't as big as like they use him in like the Dark Knight, the Dark Knight trilogy, you know, Christopher Nolan stuff. But he's in it, and he does good when he's in it. So I, I'm not gonna go into anyone else in great detail. I'm not gonna go through the whole cast because it doesn't really matter. I was just kind of going through each actor, the main cast, and some supporting roles do a really good job with what they got. And they, there's good. I mean, so now I guess we'll get into some more specifics by character. So Batman's. I feel like, not Batman, sorry, I was going to say Batman's betrayal, but I feel like they, Batman suffered the most from the tone change, because obviously they're going to make a challenge to a more light, upbeat mode, and I believe the first trailers we saw, so it was going that way anyways, but I'm sure Snyder leaving, they probably bumped up that upbeat mode a lot more than even he was going to do, which could have hurt it, I'm not sure, but Batman suffered the most from the upbeat change. And it seems like Batman was, he was this bright spot of Batman v Superman because of how bad a he was and how cool that character was with the fight scenes, the, the brutality of him was really just basically gone in this movie. And I feel like they weakened him too far to an extent because we get it that he's not on the same level as all these other characters, but you got to let him do something. Like let him beat the crap out of some parademons or something. It just looked kind of sad like he was struggling fighting the whole movie and just not as brooding, a lot of j more jokes and stuff, and I'm sure the performance Ben did a good job, so like I said, and Batman was still enjoyable, but I feel like they kind of dumbed him down a bit too much, and it, Batman should have stayed this really cool character, which he's always been. I mean, there's other, DC does really good animated movies, like PG-13 and R animated movies, and Batman does, is really flushed out on those and does a good job. I feel like they could have learned from those a little bit with the way he was portrayed. So he's usually stand out a little bit based off his, his darkness, his brutality, and his willing to get anything done, anything, almost anything that's necessary, all minus killing, of course, unless it involves aliens, then, you know, just kill the crap out of him. But, yeah, I just, I feel like Batman could have been utilized better. Superman, I guess the same thing, like I said, the character change was kind of fast, but, I mean, it's kind of what you expected. I'll get more of that with spoilers. Like I said, Wonder Woman didn't really change much. I feel it's a good thing she did. That woman or his character's been established and it's really cool, really well. Uh, Flash, more up. I guess I went in depth with those guys. Aquaman kind of serves as a similar position to Flash, where you can tell he's like really cool and badass, but he doesn't he doesn't fight too much, and you don't see him like fully 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 utilizing the power. There's not like a warehouse fight scene for any of these characters from like BVS, where you can really see how powerful they are. Same with Cyborg. Cyborg's kind of used more as a piece that they kind of need to move the plot forward like literally but I'll get more to that later but the character's still awesome and like I said Ray Fisher did a good job so um that being said all this being said like the plot being kind of the villain not being great like most superhero movies have been that way and the cast did a really good job it being a lot more upbeat than usual I feel like the, it could have benefited from a longer cut like an extended cut or I've seen there's a petition with over 100,000 signatures for them to release Zack Snyder's original cut and the original score that came with it. I, saw, I, I would love to watch that, too. I mean, this, not that this movie's bad, but it'd be interesting to see how his vision would have played out fully. I'm not 
there's, I'm sure it would have been a little darker and more brooding, but not as dark as the other ones, because even the original trailer showed some more upbeat lightness to it. And I feel like, it, I guess, depends on how you view it. Like, the fun was, it was a fun movie, but part of the problem with it, how being upbeat and fun it was, it kind of made it a bit campy, you know, and it could be more forgettable than other movies. I feel like Wonder Woman was, like, a better example of what to do with it, where it wasn't too dark, but it wasn't, like, just jokes or a bit too over the top with the happiness and the lightness you know I found a good balance of like the dark and the light and it made it a really good enjoyable movie I'm, sh I'm sure they still got to figure that out in the future but overall I'd say it's a good movie a lot better than like a 30% and I feel like IMDB's score is actually a pretty realistic score in the movie which is like they're at like a 7.3 I'd say like a 7.5 out of 10 if I was doing out of 10 but even Ignoring that score, I'd say it's definitely watchable, and you should go watch it in theaters right now. I might, I would buy it again on Blu-ray if they came out with an extended edition, because I'm sure, not even a director's, not even a Zack Snyder entire vision, but if they just changed it with the extended edition and put back some of the clips they cut out due to the two-hour time constraint, it could have flushed it out a bit more without fully changing to Zack's vision. So I feel like that would have been better for sure and it'd be really interesting to watch and i would love it so anyways guys that's the non-spoiler portion of this review um i guess i'm gonna go ahead and save the spoiler talk for another video because this was a super long kind of rambling normal review so stay tuned my next video will be a spoiler talk for it and it'll be this long if not longer i guess i had a lot to say about this movie so i guess hope you enjoyed make sure you go watch justice league watch out in theaters and hopefully we see more like this in the future. All right, guys, this is Kimmy Present. Signing out. See you later.